Hello everyone, welcome once again to Everyday HDR. This is uh, the series of the free tutorial Friday, of course. Today I'm going to show you how to make an old looking photograph from a new HDR. So um, I talked a little bit on my blog earlier about Alfred Stieglitz, who I feel is the father of American photography. He was an early 1900s photographer, but I love the old look that he's got within his photos. I mean, obviously they're old because they were taken in the early 1900s, but um, this effect, this uh, somewhat sepia-toned effect, um, but it almost seems as if that's the color of the paper. Now, I'm no art historian. Uh, took a couple art history classes, and I forgot everything about Alfred Stieglitz other than the fact that I love his photographs. So, um, that's pretty simple. I mean, I don't have a dark room, so I can't quite make this uh, how Stieglitz did, but I do have a digital dark room, and I have some pretty good HDR photographs that I can do it to. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is apologize if this tutorial drags on because I just ate turkey. It's Thanksgiving and I just came out of a turkey coma hanging out with my son and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get into another turkey coma after I'm done with this. So let's get this over with so I can eat more turkey and uh, you can have a nice old photograph. So the first thing I'm going to do after apologizing is double click this and uh, make it an editable layer. I'm going to put a layer underneath it. This is going to, in the future, this is going to be important. Press Shift F5 to fill that with white. So now I need to make this a gradient map. That was just setting this up for the future because I want to put a border around this and you're going to see how that works. But now I need to do a gradient map. Um, and what I want you to pay attention to is this color right here when I press gradient map. Um, what a gradient map does is I think it's the best way to get a black, a true black and white image because it maps the tones in your image based on their color and how they will rank in the gradient scale um, which is very uh, true to Ansel Adams with the zone scale of black and white photography from 0 to 10 um, so press gradient map now the problem is we don't have a black and white image right now um, because the things that should be black are now filled in with this tan color and the reason why that happened was if you go back to our history we had that tan color selected. If we had a black color selected, it would have made our gradient map. So it's not that big of a deal. You can just click on your gradient map, uh, double click on your gradient map in the level layers selection, double click in the uh, color pane, and then double click on that color and turn it to black. And now we have black. So now what I want to do is I want to create a new layer and I want to fill this. So I'm going to press Shift F5 to fill this with another color not white, another color. Now I already have selected. This is the color that I've kind of picked off from the web that um, I think looks like Alfred Stieglitz. And uh, it's pretty close because I took that photo into my Photoshop and I used the dropper to get this color. So it, it's pretty close. DBC8 al Alpha 7 is the color in HTML. DBC8 Alpha 7 if you want to write that down for your future use. Or if you're working right along with me, just put that right in there. Press OK and press OK. Now fill, set that to about 50%, and we're all, we're almost there. We're pretty close. Now the curves, I'm going to fill this in. Uh, the output, I'm going to fill fill it to about 50, and the input to about 77. Now that just works for this photograph. Um, all photographs are going to be different, so if you're making this into an action, just know that you might need to adjust your curves. If you want to blow out the colors a little, the uh, wash it out, you can blow out by selecting your highlights and pulling them up. But I'm just going to keep it just right where it is, uh, and move on. So now we have a pretty decent looking photograph. I, you know, I could be happy with this as being an old photo. But if you look back at Alfred Stieglitz stuff, he's got this border around it. So I want a border too, but. I know there's many ways to make a border around an image. I'm not going to do any of the traditional ones. I'm just going to make a selection of it. You could uh, right click, select all, uh, contract, and make a border a nice, clean, mathematical way. Everything's perfect, but I don't want this to be perfect because I want this to look like I just got out of the dark room and I maybe ate too much turkey and fell asleep on my enlarger and moved my photograph, photographic paper out of the way. So let's go ahead and make a border around this. and you don't have to be really clean about it, just make a border around it. Select your layer of your photograph that you want the border to be around and select the mask, add layer mask. 
and I could be okay with that too, but you know how I take things one step farther. So I'm going to unlink the mask, because what I want to do is I want to skew the mask to make it look like the, the border is skewed a little bit. If I were to skew it right now, I'd be skewing the photograph and the mask, because I'm linked. Right now this is telling, Photoshop is telling this image that anything that you do to this mask is going to happen onto this photograph. So I'm going to unlink those. I'm going to make sure that my uh, mask is selected. I'm going to edit and I'm going to go to transform and I'm going to go to skew. And I'm going to skew it. I'm just going to pull that one up a little bit, pull this one down a little bit. And I'm pretty pleased with that. Uh, I've got a little off kilter looking photo right now. Looks like I fell asleep on my enlarger because I ate too much turkey. And I could be good with this. I could call this good too, but um, I want to add a texture. So, of course, you see all my textures here. I take textures of weird things. Um, like even look at this. This is the pan of my toaster oven. Yeah. And I usually cover it with foil, but stuff gets under there. And you'd be thinking, man, that really needs to be cleaned. But what I was thinking was more like, man, I should do this more often because look at this texture that you get from that. That's a nice texture. I don't know about you. But I'm not going to use that texture. Just showing you that I see texture everywhere and I love texture. And I love putting texture on my photographs. And I also love this texture. It's my favorite texture I have. So I'm going to press V. And I'm going to move this texture right onto my image. And then I'm going to line it up. And then I'm going to press Control T to make sure it takes up the whole thing. Press Enter. And right now I could just drop the opacity on this and call it good. But what I see there is what looks to me like someone took one image, put it on top of the another one, and dropped the opacity. Because that's what I did. What I want is I want the true detail of this photo applied to my other photo. So if you've ever done a uh, high pass sharpen, it's the same thing. It's just an extreme high pass sharpen. So go to other, go to high pass, and take that high pass up to the high 30s, 30 or higher. Press OK. And then go to soft light. And if that doesn't do it, go down a little bit to hard light, and that does it, and drop the opacity a little bit more. And we're good. Let's get back into turkey coma. So, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, probably watch it on Friday because that's when I post it. But anyway, it's, happy. it's Thanksgiving weekend. It's always happy, right? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Take care and have a great weekend. Bye.